Is there any reason to believe that the Russians may have played a role in that chemical attack that killed children? You know, I can't go into the details of anything from the intelligence briefing, but what I can say is that um, our government, our intelligence communities, our military is convinced that the uh, Syrian government was involved with the chemical attack. Are you convinced that the target that we struck indeed is where that attack originated? You know, I guess what I've been more concerned is not the military aspects of the mission or even whether or not it will have any significance. My concern has been mostly that this is an inappropriate way to begin a war, that the Constitution says war begins with a vote in Congress, and that even George Bush, who was often treated mercilessly by the media as being so far out there, he came to Congress and asked to have to go to war against the Taliban and those who attacked us on 9-11. He also did the same in Iraq. And so I think this is a, a wrong-headed notion that we just skip the, the most important step, and that is whether or not we should go to war. Do you think that President Trump was wrong to be emotionally swayed by the photographs of those de dead kids? You know, I think we, uh, you'd almost not be human to be emotionally swayed by it. But uh, in an era of television, you know, we see horrific images almost every day. We see the swollen, distended babies uh, who are swollen, uh, you know, from malnutrition, from maybe their leaders stealing the food that comes in as aid and reselling it in the black market. We see people burned and beheaded throughout the world. So there are atrocities throughout the world. We just have to decide when we are going to intervene as a country, when we're going to put our young men and women, put their lives on the line. And we don't, frankly, do it for every atrocity in the world. Doesn't mean we don't have great sympathy, but we have to debate when and where we go to war. That's what our founding fathers ask us to do. Well, I understand that. And in trying to determine when it's appropriate that there should be a strike, there's a historical parallel that occurs to me. Would Senator Rand Paul have opposed the bombing of the tracks going into Auschwitz? Well, you know, I haven't contemplated going back to World War II, but I can tell you a more similar analogy would be uh, Saddam Hussein gassed the Kurds, and then we chose to intervene. We overthrew a despot who had used chemical weapons on his own people, same sort of thing. But what we wound up with something worse. We wound up with an emboldened and empowered Iran. Now the same people who wanted to take out Hussein now want to take out Iran. So there can be an endless supply of enemies. And you have to ask yourself, who takes over next? Are they better than the current occupant? So are the Islamic rebels, the radical Islamic rebels in Syria, better than Assad? There are also two million Christians in, Assad, in Syria. They're being protected by Assad, and they fear the Islamic rebels taking over. So there's a, there's a co complicated uh, decision-making process as to who are the good guys in the war. You know, if you talk about Auschwitz, it's pretty clear there was one bad guy and uh, many innocents slaughtered. So I don't think that's a, a rel uh, necessarily a, a correct analogy. Well, but let's just pursue that one step further, right? I mean, if the argument is that it would be right to take out the tracks going into Auschwitz because there was a greater good, we could avert catastrophe in terms of, of a human loss. Well, the reason why it's not a great analogy is because we were at war, and we, yeah, absolutely, you would do all of that when you're at war, and we had made a decision uh, to be at war, so that was not a, wouldn't have been a big deal or a big decision. The actual more important historical question, if you want to talk about history, is why didn't we? Why, why didn't we show more concern for those in these concentration camps because there is some historical evidence that we could have done much more. And so, but I don't think that's really a question for me. It's probably a question historically for those who at the time didn't act and do more. Has the president himself reversed course? Because in August of 2013, he tweeted the president, in this case, he was referring to President Obama, must get congressional approval before attacking Syria. Big mistake if he does not. You know, I can't answer for the president, and he hasn't asked me to be his spokesman yet. He hadn't even asked me to reveal his golf score or anything yet. But what I would say is that my hope is this doesn't reflect a profound change in his uh, attitude towards foreign policy. He really clearly ran on the Iraq war was a mistake, regime change hasn't worked, and that involving ourselves in civil wars throughout the world is really not the job of America's foreign policy. Some will say maybe this is an exception to the rule, and I hope, frankly, that this is an exception and that he won't believe that we can actually solve the Syrian war militarily. I hope he doesn't believe that we can get involved in Yemen's war, frankly, but there's been some evidence that in both Syria and Yemen he's had 
more of a propensity to get involved than I would have hoped for him. I completely understand that your position, Senator Rand Paul's position, is that Congress needs to be a part of this equation. What of the argument that says that the 2001 authorization gives him grounds to do that which he has done? The president is authorized to use all necessary and appropriate force, those who aided terrorist attacks, those who harbored organizations. You know the language of the 2001 authorization. Is that enough for him? Well, people who make that argument are not intellectually serious people. In fact, I think they're dishonest people. That resolution specifically says September 11th. It was 9-11. Those are the people who perpetrated, helped organize, and that. And if someone's going to come on television or in any public forum and say Assad had something to do with 9-11, uh, they're frankly just a dishonest person. No, we cannot let one generation bind another generation. We are now having a new generation of soldiers that uh, might not even have been born or have been barely born at the time of 9-11. We have new legislature, which turns over periodically, and a representative democracy like we have, you should vote. I mean, the generation of 9-11 certainly shouldn't bind us to a forever war in the Middle East. I think it's absurd, it's wrong-headed, and frankly, uh, intellectually dishonest. Was there a vital U.S. interest at stake in our retaliation? You know that President Trump has said that the potential for the spread of chemical weapons was that vital U.S. interest. Do you agree with the president? No, I think as horrific as the attacks were and as heartrending as the uh, pictures and the atrocity and the children dying, um, I don't believe that there was a national security interest of the United States. And that's why you have the debate, because it's too often we all, we all, everybody knows the buzzwords, everybody knows the catchwords. It was in our vital interest. Well, that's the conclusion. So we get 100 senators together and we have a debate, and 435 members of Congress, you have a debate. Everybody's going to assert from their position that it either does or does not have a vital national security interest. But that's sort of like weighing the facts in a jury, and you can come to different conclusions. I think it's hard-pressed to believe that, uh, I'm not saying it's a good thing that Syrians would have chemical weapons, but it's hard-pressed to believe that they have the ability to either launch them in any military way to attack us at home or bring them here somehow. It's not a good thing, and I think it's good for us as, as a part of the civilized world to unite and say we shouldn't have these things. And in some ways, we should lead by example. And it was always troubling to me that we were the biggest stockpiler, stockpiler of nerve gas. We now have a big depot in Kentucky where we've been decontaminating it for 20 some odd years. But who are the people who thought it was a good idea for the U.S. to have the biggest stockpile of nerve gas? So fortunately, we never used it. But uh, you don't stockpile that stuff unless you have the intention someday of using it. On Friday, Nikki Haley said that this might be the beginning. There could be more action that we would take. How concerned is Senator Rand Paul that the net net of all of this might be ground troops, American ground troops in Syria? You know, I asked Nikki Haley very clearly during her confirmation whether or not she would advocate for war not authorized by Congress. And in her testimony to me, she said she wouldn't. And so I take her out of word. Uh, she may not quite be understanding 59 cruise missiles as war, uh, but I certainly hope that she and others will understand that uh, increasing and escalating uh, ground troops in Syria is obviously war. And, you know, the great irony is, look, we just appointed Justice Neil Gorsuch because all the conservatives said, hey, he's an originalist. He's going to obey the original interpretation as the founding fathers believed it. Well, guess what? The Founding Fathers also believed you should declare a war. So if we are originalists for Neil Gorsuch, couldn't we at least have a few Republicans who are consistent enough to believe in the original interpretation with regard to war? Final question. Are we being hypocritical insofar as we acted in the name of those dead children, but still refused to take on additional Syrian refugees, many of whom are kids? Well, I think when you look at um, what creates mass migration, what creates refugees, and what creates the death that has happened in Syria, it's war. And so people ask me that, and they say, well, you know, aren't we going to help them? Well, if war created it, more war may, may well create more refugees and more death. I don't know, understand how more war is going to lead to less refugees. I do think, though, that there is an opening. And one of the tragedies of all this Russia craziness right now is it probably does prevent us from having any kind of meaningful dialogue because anybody who wants to talk to Putin about a political settlement and letting and helping Assad go away, anybody who wants to talk about that, 
myself included, will be called by the McCains of this world a friend of Vladimir Putin. So as long as we have that kind of stupidity involved in the debate, makes it very hard to get to what President Obama said and many other thinking people said that the answer in Syria is ultimately a political solution.